Wrestling on the feet has been one of the most basic features of our sport for centuries, from ancient Greco-Roman to modern freestyle and folk style forms. Sumo wrestling is a great example of wrestling in a standing position. If you've tried it or watched it, you know that the biggest sumo wrestler doesn't always win. Rather, the sumo champion is the wrestler who establishes the best base, gains the greatest leverage, and attacks his opponent at the most advantageous angle. The same is true in other forms of wrestling. A good stance and setup position are required to perform the leg tackles leading to takedowns and points. In addition to being able to attack an opponent on the feet, a wrestler must also be prepared to fend off attacks and score off these attacks through a number of techniques. This tape teaches the essential setups, leg attacks, goal behinds, defensive maneuvers, and several more key moves to be a standout in a standing position. Practice the demonstrated techniques and drills correctly and repeatedly and you'll be on your way to mastering one of the essentials to being a champion wrestler. We're fortunate to have a couple great wrestlers with me today on this video. Bill Zadig, formerly of Montana, prep champion and NCAA champion at the University of Iowa. And Mark Ironside, former Cedar Rapids prep champion and a couple time NCAA champion. Stance, position, movement. Faking, it's all good setups for scoring on the feet, even from a defensive position like here, where we clear the arms and go around for a goal behind. The key to all offensive skills and defensive skills in standing wrestling is one's stance. It's very important to have a comfortable stance to make sure that these skills work well. Bill's stance, this is, he's comfortable with that. Mark stance, he's comfortable with that. You notice their hips are under, their legs are under them, their hands are down, their heads fairly, fairly up. But more importantly, they're, they're using their own position to be able to feel comfortable. A European stance is one which we go up against when we go overseas, and that's more where they're bent over further at the head. They have, a lot of times they stagger more and they don't have their hips under as much. They don't do as much motion as we do. They uh, have their arms out sometimes a little bit further, have a little bit distance. And sometimes uh, we have trouble because of this particular stance. Greco-Roman stance is more upright. They're using their hips. Of course, you cannot attack the lower body, and so that's why you can bring your legs right in there. We have a stance in motion drill here where Bill's circling, he's reaching down, he's stalking, he's backing up, he's body faking, keeping his arms down, head in good position, circling back and forth. This drill's great at the beginning of practice. It's great at the end when you're tired. Great to put yourself in a lot of positions. A lot of body faking. Bill's doing a stance drill, he's combining it with a knockout, and he's circling up. Knockout is basically preventing the opponent from scoring, keeping him off your legs. He also incorporates that with some hip heisting. As he knocks out, he hits a couple of hip heists, one or two, and circles up. Throws his legs back, hip heist, and circles up. A good stance with fakes in motion opens up numerous offensive scoring opportunities, as well as limiting your opponent's scoring attempts. A good pummeler makes scoring look easy from the standing position. Here is a drill for pummeling. 
that incorporate speed, power, and motion. Speed. Power. Speed and power, motion. Straight on. Ready, hit it. This sumo drill teaches you to control your opponent. Control allows for many opportunities to score with offensive maneuvers. The objective of the drill is to move your opponent out of the 10-foot circle or simply snap them to the mat. A good tie can create snapping and go-behind opportunities. Ties and snaps and go-behinds all go together. Bill here will be doing different ties and then he'll go to snaps and then he'll finish up with go-behinds. Starts out with a collar inside tie, pushing, snapping, going behind. A strong push-pull action will set your opponent on their nose. We go to an underhook and wrist. Here's the underhook, wrist, pushes in, reaches up to the head, snaps, go behind. Short penetration with your tie arm is important from an offensive and defensive point of view. Goes into a front headlock tie. Here and here, pushes in, snaps, go behind. A tight elbow is very important here to make sure you eliminate any scoring opportunities again from your opponent's point of view. Now we go into a two on one tie. There's two, two arms on one arm, pushes in, snaps, go behind. When using the two-on-one tie, keep a good angle to keep your opponent off your legs. And lastly, the inside, double inside tie, pushing, snapping, and going behind. The inside tie position is the most commonly used of the ties. Snap drills are good drills to use when an opponent is pushing in hard. If he's not pushing in hard, you push first and then you snap. These are done on the feet, snapping to the mat, keeping good hand control, or they're done on the mat as well. On the mat, just like on the feet, you can incorporate good go-behinds. The go-behind circle drill is one we use in our practices daily. It puts fear in your opponent's offense and allows you to concentrate on your own offense. The biggest mistake made on a go behind is when you only put a little bit of weight on the near arm and he's able to turn like that. Top, the go behind man reaches for the far hip and he loses him every time. Reacting effectively to an opponent's offense can put you in great scoring position and may even lead to a fall. With a good stance off an opponent's shot, a, a whip over can be a very common move, especially off a double leg. The whip over will end in a fall or back points, which is ideal in wrestling. A common mistake in shooting is to miss the shot and reach up, and because of that, you can get whipped over. The 
correct way to do it is for this man to make the shot, instead of reaching up, is to keep his arm down and circle out. Sprawling and clearing an opponent's hands is a good defensive maneuver. Here we use a drill that is exactly for this purpose. Sprawling and clearing his hands and then incorporating the go-behind. Important principle here is to make sure that you sprawl far enough before you go behind, otherwise you can get yourself in trouble. Common error in the go behind is to forgetting to clear this hand. He needed to come back, clear the hand off before he went around the go behind. A real important essential on go behinds is to not stop out front and tie up and then go behind. It's more important to hit an angle off an opponent's shot. However, sometimes you do have to stop out front and then you need to push it in, snap in the head, pull in the power arm and rotating around is very important. Bouncing the head off the mat to get the angle to get the go behind. Pushing in and elongating the opponent is very important. Same time keeping the weight on this, the arm that you're going around behind. This is an offensive uh, partner shooting drill where this man's going to be getting the go behind, this man's going to be attacking the legs. He'll be lowering his level, keeping his heads, his hand, and his shoulders down to make sure that uh, doesn't allow this guy to penetrate to his legs. A real key thing on this is not getting into his legs lowering his head and shoulders, and also keeping weight on the same side that he's going around until he's around behind. Good. Counter to a front headlock, simply to go to a two-on-one, especially when this is done on the feet, circling in to him. Another good counter to the front headlock is a quick duck before he gets the headlock tight. Both the two-on-one and the duck work only right off the initial front headlock. Committing one's hips to almost a back arch is very important in this duck under. Once a front headlock gets tight, grabbing the elbow and pushing in, bending the knees will release the pressure. An essential position to learn is clearing front headlocks from the knees. This is a very common position that everyone gets in when you do leg attacks. Clearing your opponent off your head by driving into them is necessary. Grabbing an elbow and sliding your head out aids the process. A short drag action, besides just driving into your opponent, is another term that's commonly used here. Dragging that arm by, getting an angle. Duck unders are also used from the knees as well as from the feet. Anytime you do a duck from the knees, it almost looks like a leg attack. Just a little action there creates an opening to score. Not letting your opponent solidify that tie-up position is real critical to making sure that the maneuver works. The body lock duck drill is a great drill that you use to help yourself after you missed a shot. It 
puts you in a position of scoring, and with good action, you can knock your opponent off of you and gives you an opportunity to actually come up around and score. You can see it takes a lot of effort by the bottom man. A good double leg requires penetration and driving. It also requires sometimes cutting corners. Bill hit a good driving leg tackle. He's going to show four setups and four finishes, but I'd like to see that good driving leg tackle one more time. On the driving leg tackle, we're going to emphasize four good setups. First one is body faking, and he hits the move. Second one is the elbow post, we're emphasizing, and then he hits the move. Collar and inside tie snap. Then he hits the move. And lastly, the underhook elbow post and hits the move. The fakes get your opponent to react. The elbow post clears your opponent's arms, leading for a good double leg shot. This tie will clear the opponent's head out of position to give you a good chance to penetrate. The underhook and the far side elbow post creates nothing but legs. Finishes on the double leg tackle. First one is the standard head to one side, leg on the other. An important point is to make sure that you stay low and cover across the far side. Second one is lifting your opponent into the air and circling him down. An important point here is to get a swing in your action, up and down. Third finish is twisting him to, the, to his rear with a shoulder in. making sure you cover the hips. And lastly, when the opponent sprawls, you have a slide by. Real quick action. Here we use the head and far side leg trap. Here we use the lift, and of course we control our opponent to the mat. Here we get in and we twist our opponent. And here we get caught, so we slide by. On the double jolt drill, uh, a good drill for double legs and leg penetration is when the opponent reaches for the shoulders, you come in and jolt in every time. Opponent reaches in, straight arm. This jolt drill gives us the opportunity to know we are penetrating. Sometimes in drilling situations, it's wise to use a landing pad to save wear and tear on people's bodies, especially when you're lifting and driving in a sport like wrestling. Lowering one's level and penetrating puts you in a position of high single legs. This is the standard high single leg position. Just reaching in, coming up with a single leg. 
Staying on the feet, high single leg. From the high single position, we have several important finishes. The first is the head drive finish. It's important to penetrate the hips under on this head drive finish. The second is the far knee barzagar finish, named after a famous Iranian champion. The hips under, shoulders under, and snatching that far knee as he goes to the mat. The third finish is the low ankle lift finish. You reach down and trip the far ankle. The low ankle lift finish. The fourth is the far knee behind finish. Circling behind, driving the two knees together. This is a very good execution near the edge of the mat. And lastly is the lift finish off the high single. Where you pick in, roll the opponent down. Hips under, very important, hips under. Staying in a good squat finish is important on the head drive for power. It's also important for picking the far knee. Quickness is important in the low single leg as well as a kick. Cutting the corner from behind and trapping the far knee on this finish. And lifting and controlling your opponent to the mat is also critical. A very important drill on the high single finish is the in-out drill, where you bring the knee from the inside to the outside, from the outside to the inside, back and forth. Knee positions will determine where you take your opponent. A variation of the head of the Inside high single finish is when the opponent takes the head to the outside and he drives him and dumps him. It's the same type of penetration move as a double leg. When your opponent pushes your head to the outside, you must stay very tight to make sure that he doesn't cut the corner on you. Corner cutting helps with the finishes of takedowns. Here it makes it easy. We're going to do corner cutting drills that are good for leg tackle finishes. Here we're doing a head to the inside corner cutting drill. An important point here is making sure when you come around behind you pick the ankle up. We also do this drill down on the mat with the head to the outside, cutting the corner, sweeping around picking up that ankle again. making sure one's head does not hit the mat and stay down to the mat. Getting away from the opponent's weight is really essential on these corner cutting drills. Corner cutting drills can also be done from the feet to get away from the opponent's weight to make sure you can go to your finishes. Here Bill is finishing from the head to the inside while he's on his feet coming around. At the same time he can do it with the head to the outside comes around, stays close to the opponent's far knee, and at the same time, comes around in a squat position, staying away from the opponent's weight. Corner cutting from head to the outside on the knees to the feet is actually ideal. What it does is it puts you in a good position to penetrate and to finish the move even better than staying on the knees. Here, Lincoln McElravey cuts the corner, lifts, and finishes. Here, Olympic champion Tom Brands uses a sweep single and gets caught, but he uses a limp arm finish to get the takedown. This is the initial position on a sweep single, something that you wouldn't do, you would add the finishes. And the finishes that we need to add are the far knee finish from behind. You need to sweep, drop your shoulder, come around, pick the ankle up, and go to the far knee. Another sweep single finish would be lift and finish. 
No hesitation, lift and drive. A head drive finish. Getting the weight off, coming around would be another finish. When the opponent puts a lot of weight on your near side, you dump him that way. And a sweep single finish off the low sweep single would be a limp arm. The opponent's going to a whizzer, actually throw that whizzer in there, and he limps that arm out and comes up for the takedown. Pivoting all the way around behind to be able to trap that far knee is critical. Clearing your head on this sweep single involves lifting your opponent's leg off your head. Getting caught and coming across and head driving knocks your opponent down. And of course, any time there's whizzer action, you must limp that arm out to get the takedown. A good drill off the sweep single is a lift drill, where Bill here picks up Mark with his head in between the legs, swings high with the shoulder there, and at the same time keeps his hips under. This clears Mark every time. No hesitation on this move. Bill demonstrating a head to the outside shot. Come back one more time. It's really a kind of a difficult move for a lot of people to, to learn, but when you add the finish, it's fine. The finish should be cutting the corner, like we learned earlier, coming around at the far knees. One more time. Head to the outside, come around, cut the corner. Another finish would be a lift finish. Actually, Bill won a national title on this move right there. In the national finals, he hit in. Let's do it from the, let's do it from the feet. You can see the whole move. Head to the outside shot, pop in, lift, switch off. You can also do a head to the outside shot, set the opponent on his rear end, and cover across. One more time. On this head to the outside finish, coming around and trapping the far knee brings your opponent to the mat. On this head to the outside lift, you clear your opponent off your shoulders. And on this one, you want to make sure that your head doesn't hit the mat and comes across to the far hip. Bill's executing the standard low single technique. Basically, you could call this the John Smith technique. He's going to do a cut across single leg for a finish. We'll do that again. Low single leg, cut across. And he'll also do the low single lift. One more time. Catching the heel is a must. John Smith has developed this low single so well that we have to develop defenses for this particular move. We have a drill that we use here, a go-behind drill when a man goes for our low single. We incorporated that earlier. We also have a move when he gets in on us, we peel the hand, incorporate our go behind, and we also just go for a stalemate when he has it too tight. The near arm far leg works especially well off the inside tie. This next move is a variation of a leg tackle. It's called a near arm far leg. It's a move that myself, Tom Brands used a lot in the Olympic games and in our entire career. Near arm, far leg, takes the opponent right to his back. Another variation would be when the opponent pulls his arm out, he sweeps singles. It's a variation that when you lose the arm, the near arm, you just go to a sweep single and your far knee finish. And the last variation would be a fake at the knee and head snap, where the opponent reacts a little bit snaps and goes behind. The best outcome of the near arm far leg is taking your opponent right to his back. If the arm slips, you end up in a sweep single and a far knee finish. 
Getting your opponent to react results in a snap down off the near arm far leg. A pinning can happen in standing wrestling. A lot of it happens through tosses. And tosses are moves that usually happen because we do a back step drill. This back step drill will teach good hip positions at the same time put your opponent towards his back. Now we incorporate an actual toss after we've learned the back step drill. Bill will hit an arm toss off this back step drill. Now, we'll do an, an alternative to this back step drill would be both athletes throw each other one at a time. What makes this work is an opponent pushing into his partner. An essential from this hip drill is the hip toss. The opponent ends directly on his back and hopefully in a fall position. Another essential is the headlock. Opponent pushing in, very similar. Staying perpendicular as you land is real critical. Both of these moves were set up through the backstep drill. Swinging your opponent behind you and having low hips helps on the hip toss and as well on the headlock. Deep penetration and back arch helps with the duck under. And now we'll show some additional moves from the standing position. The first one is the high crotch. It's almost similar to a duck under when he comes around off the elbow. The second one is a, a duck under. He peels the hand off the head at the second time he comes up, he comes around. Peels the hand off the head, ducks, comes around. An arm drag is the next move. Simply pulling the opponent to the mat, coming around, swiveling at the hips. Fireman's carry. In and dump, clearing the head is very important. Often, young people get their head caught and then they fail to score. And lastly, ankle picks. That's a pop ankle pick and moving and picking the ankle is another good technique. The high crotch is a combination of a duck and leg attack. Setting up a duck under requires removing your opponent's hand. An arm drag can toss your opponent to the mat. Clearing the head on the fireman's carry makes for an easy finish. Banging the head on the ankle pick helps the entire move. You've just seen the essentials of standing wrestling. In this video, they were demonstrated in near-perfect form by two great wrestlers. Leg attacks and go-behinds are key skills for success on the feet. Work to perfect these moves, and you'll come out on top.